I'm with Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio, and welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by ApplianceVideo.com. Alright, we're on a Whirlpool washing machine that will not spin or drain. So the first thing we're going to do is get it into the spin position and turn it on. Normally, when you open and close the door, you should hear a little click that will engage this uh, plunger into the lid switch. I do not hear a click, so I'm going to support it from underneath and just press this in to check to see if it's a switch. And sure enough, when we press it, uh, it starts so we know that we have a bad lid switch and need to replace it. All right, the tools we'll need for this repair are a common Phillips screwdriver, a flat blade common screwdriver, a <clears throat> uh, 5 sixteenths ratchet or nut driver, and a tack puller. So to begin to replace the lid switch on this model, we're going to unplug the unit. And there are two uh, Phillips screws in the back that need to come out. So we'll just take our common Phillips screwdriver and loosen those. There's one down. There's a, if you can't see them, there's a, a interesting angle that you need to get at to actually loosen these. And it's up to you as to whether you take them completely out or not. If you don't, it's kind of likely that they fall in the back, but it's up to you. And now we will bring the console forward to disengage the catches there. All right, the first step to replacing this, or the next step to replace this lid switch is we're going to uh, pull up on the uh, connector catch and remove the connector. Next we're going to remove the cabinet brackets here. So we're just going to take a tack puller. You can use a common screwdriver as well and just press it forward to release and remove that side and do the same thing to the other side. Alright, so now we're just going to remove the cabinet. Uh, the easiest way I found is to grab the inside of this, pull it forward, and once it's forward we can uh, remove it from the two catches at the bottom and remove our entire cabinet out of the way. Alright, so we're going to remove the mounting screws for the lid switch. Once those are gone, the switch will hang freely. So now we can remove our uh, lid switch connector and there's tabs on each side that need to be depressed to release them from the cabinet. So we'll push in on that and push down. Push in on the other side and our connector goes right through. Uh, and now we just have some wiring and one grounding bolt to go to remove the lid switch. Alright, so we have our little ground screw to remove. It's a 3 16 so we're going to take a 3 16 ratchet and remove this. After that, we have a, a clip that's right here and here that holds the wiring in. The easiest way to take care of that is to just pull this cover out and that gives us just a less tension so that we can pull the little clip back and remove the wiring. The same thing up here, it's just the same exact clip. We'll just pull it back a little bit and then we can remove it. Uh, the, a, a real common way that these break is right at the molded plastic and they come apart. We got our new switch and it comes with uh, two, two pieces of plastic and a spot to break them so we'll just remove uh, one of them, you really only need one. And the first thing that we'll do is put the wires through that little clip and insert our plastic guard. That makes it go in real easy. You just pull back the clip up here and insert the wires through. Now all our wires are routed. We can connect this 
ground screw or bolt. So we'll get that guy started in the cabinet and tighten it up. Next, we will insert our connector into the cabinet. There is a tab right on the front that lines up with the, the way that it needs to go into the cabinet so you can't get it in there wrong. You just push up until both sides catch. You can pull on it a little bit to make sure it's in there right and then just adjust the, the, the wiring so that it's out of the way and in the right spot. And then we will reconnect our, our switch to the top of the cabinet and proceed from there. All right, we have two Phillips mounting screws left, so we're going to uh, place our lid switch in the right spot here. We'll line up the holes, and I always get one started just to make sure it lines up real good. And once they're in there, we can tighten them both down. And our new switch is fully installed. We'll go ahead and close the door and listen for a click. That sounds great. And the next step is to put our cabinet back on. And we're going to put our cabinet back in. So we're going to lift it up in the middle. Get it in its general area. Put it at an angle to get under the frame of the machine. From there, you can see it line up with the, the two catches on there. Slide it generally back into place. Sometimes you need to pull the, the back of the cabinet forward to clear the water valve. And you should hear its seat in the back. There's two catches on the frame to line it up right. So we have our cabinet back into place. We're just gonna put our clips back in. Put this side in there and push down. If it goes in real smooth, you know you have the cabinet back on right. And if you look down the back, uh, it'll be nice and even and smooth. So now we will get our other side into place, put our clip back in, push it down. Insert our electrical connector, put our console back in the service or back into position. We're going to line up our guides at the bottom and we're back right now. We're just going to uh, insert our screws in the back. And there is one little trick on the first spot if you kind of tap it it'll definitely go into where it's supposed to otherwise you might just be sitting there tightening nothing and we're fully seated there now we're going to plug our unit back in still in the spin spinning real good stopping real nice we turn the agitator make sure the agitator dogs are good and our lid switch is completed. Thank you for watching another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.